Recently, I uploaded a survey on the community tab here at Stone Magpie and thank you everybody who responded to the survey to say which unboxing you would like to see next. And this one won the vote. This is a kit, new to me company, Oraloa. It's a French company, so myself being in the UK, this one took less than a week to arrive. Let's get the box open and have a good look at the kit contents. So inside the box we have the diamond painting kit and something else fell out here. So this looks like a little free gift from Oraloa. It says, let your creativity sparkle. Let's have a little look, how lovely. Oh, oh it is October, so we've got a pumpkin. <laughs> So the sticker is on the bag, little funny pumpkin. <laughs> okay, what is all of this? So that looks like an Oraloa sticker. Again, being October, he's got his pumpkin and his broomstick dressed as a witch. <laughs> Cute. Do you have the three, I'm not sure what that word is, Oh, but that's quite exciting. I'll do that later. Then we have, uh, it's a card with a nice picture of a tree house. And another card. <laughs> so these look like collectible cards in here. I've got 001 and 010. I'm not sure what these are all about. <laughs> this is quite new to me. And then I've got another card. Let your creativity sparkle. So if anybody's ordered from Oraloa before, this is really fun. But what do you do with these? Are they just collectible cards? Are they supposed to be for something? Please do let me know. So putting those aside, let's have a look at these two cute things. Look! We've got a tiny little mini tray. Isn't that sweet? Oh, a Maloa, tiny little tray. Now that could be used, oh, on, well, what could it be used? It could be used for obviously tipping your diamonds into and using as a diamond tray, or you could even use it as a little junk tray if you wanted, but it has got an open end so you can tip the diamonds back in. That is so cute. And actually, I'm quite tempted to pop a magnet on the back and use it as a cover minder. That could be something that I experiment with. And what's in here? A little tub of ooh, all sorts. Let's have a see. We've got a little tail, glittery tail. We've got a seahorse. <laughs> We've got a ghosty person. And then we've got all of these crystals. They look like natural crystals in there. How lovely. Again, I could always pop a magnet on the back of this one to create a cover minder. Well, that's something new to me, a little free gift. I love this. And I'll be able to do some scratching later to see if I've won whatever that is. <laughs> I'm loving this kit already. If you would like to discover Oraloa for yourselves, I do have a discount code. If you put in Stone Magpie in the coupon code, you will get 15% off. And it'll be interesting to see what you get as your free little baggie. Looking at the box itself, it is very sturdy. It is cellophane wrapped, so feels very glossy. 
So a nice quality box here. Let's get the cellophane off and we'll have a closer look. So having a look at the box itself, it is a really glossy box, even without the cellophane on, and it, it feels very, very sturdy. There is absolutely no dings, creases or anything from the shipping, which is great. On this side, let's turn it round, you can see the diamond painting details here, and what a beautiful painting this one is. The artist is Eleanor Dodina. I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. The painting name is El Bosque Magico. Again, not sure how to pronounce that. The size is 75 by 85 centimeters and it is a round diamond kit. Just look at that, it is stunning. It's such a beautiful painting and I'm really looking forward to seeing the canvas for this one see how paint-like it is. All-inclusive premium kit. So everything that we need is inside the kit. On the end of the box, we have the details of the diamond painting again. So that means if you store your kit in your stash, this way around, you'll have that sticker there to show you the details of what's in the kit. So you can see that quite easily. Let's open the box. Ooh, tightly packed in there, look at that. I'm loving discovering these new to me companies. It's so exciting. Let's have a closer look at this kit. Opening it up, sliding out of the cellophane protective sleeve. Okay, this canvas feels so big that I've turned my camera around to try and get as much of the canvas in shot for you as I can. Let's reveal. Ooh, okay, so she's this way around. Oh, oh wow. Wow. Do you know, my first thoughts are it doesn't look as dark as what it does on the picture. Let me show you that again. Here is the picture. And then look at the canvas. This will be so interesting to see how the colour lays down. I wonder if all of the yellow patches are not yellow. Interesting, because on the picture it looks like it's going to be blacks, browns, dark greens, and yet on the canvas it looks pinks, yellows. Wow. Okay, I'm going to try and get the canvas to lay a bit flatter. As you can see, the canvas is a little bit ruffled, especially at the edges and through the back of the canvas. Whilst we've got it turned over, I'll show you that it has got the perforated edge and the scallop, and it is a very, very soft backing, really soft. I'm just rolling it very loosely the other way around. And I'll do that again this way. But you can already see that some of that in the middle has already disappeared. Down the edges, not so much. Okay, let's see if that's helped. Okay. 
So I very nearly got the whole canvas in shot for you. It's just slightly off the end here, not by much. And at the bottom it says, let your creativity sparkle. And this feels very good quality. It's got like a slippy finish to it. Very, very nice. So looking at the details in this painting, it's stunning, isn't it? We've got the classic red and white mushroom grown from the forest floor with that red and white top and then the frill around the middle. And around the forest floor, we've got all sorts of floral details growing up the side, these wispy leaves, and then this beautiful arching flower here, just nodding to the fairy who sat atop the toadstool and fast asleep. I love this pose, just beautifully done with her gorgeous flowing dress flowing over the edge of the toadstool. And look at the wings, they are like butterfly wings on this fairy and it just has that delicate touch of nature within the forest because all the way around the background we've got the trees and the forest details. Very odd colouring on the canvas. I am going to look at the colours because I didn't expect it to be so pink and yellow. We will have a look at those colour numbers and see what colours they are in actual diamonds. We have got a legend top left and bottom right. So we'll have a closer look at this one. We have the Oraloa symbol here, and then we've got the number order, we've got the symbol and the DMC code here. So looking at the symbols, we've got numbers, one, two, eight, then capital letters and symbols mixed throughout. And looking down at all of these colours, I can't see many dark greens, blacks. Oh, there is a black there, 310, as the O's. So the O's, the black detail on the painting is actually black. What is that colour there? It is a pink. 814. So the pink is really a pink and number four is actually an orange. So I am quite astonished. I don't quite know what to think about that because I was expecting greens, browns and greys. Will it still show the detail as beautifully in the pinks and oranges? We'll have to find out, won't we? Here is the picture at the bottom. Now, when we look at this picture, it does look much, much, much lighter than the picture on the box. And if that is how the design turns out, I'd be happy with that. So again, let's compare the two. Very different, aren't they? You can see a lot more detail of the forest in this picture though. You can see the rocks here with the flowers, that beautiful nodding flower here, but there's also like a rope across there. That's one like the Tarzan swing, isn't it? That's all I can think. I don't know what the real name is. <laughs> well, that has taken me by surprise. Oh, just look at this tree detail. That's going to be beautifully picked out, isn't it? I'm going to get you some closer views. So here is the canvas up close and you can see with the round diamonds that each one has a circle with a symbol inside it and then it's like a square box around each circle so that when you place your round diamond on you do have the colour in the background. Because the circles are slightly, slightly lighter than the colour itself 
you do need to make sure that they're placed nicely. So again, that will be another interesting point when it comes to diamond painting this one. But as you can see, all of the symbols are really, really clear. Let's move down and see the fairy's face. And here she is, fast asleep, our little fairy girl. And I really like the way that this pose has been painted. And as you can see, there's a lot of colour blocking in the face and the arm here. And looking at the canvas itself, there are a lot of colour blocked areas with just little bits of confetti here and there, so not too much. Now, when I was on the website looking for the first time, I noticed that they do categorise the diamond paintings into junior, beginner, intermediate and expert. And this is what they class as an expert kit. I couldn't tell a lot of difference in between the intermediate and the expert, so perhaps that's just done on size rather than confetti etc because this is an expert kit and as you can see there are a lot of colour blocked areas. Let's have a look at the toadstool. So even on the toadstool you have the colour blocking here with then the spots obviously dotted about and that beautiful frill. That is a really lovely detail on the toadstool. And then the very left bottom corner, you've got the forest floor. So not too confetti heavy at all, this one. I think it would be a really quick one to diamond paint. There's so many details on this canvas. My eye keeps getting drawn to this bit of the floral forest floor. Oh, it's so dainty and pretty. The whole picture, even though it's big, feels dainty. It's superb. Really, really gorgeous painting. Okay, so shall we have a look at the toolkit and the diamonds? Here is the toolkit that is supplied from Oraloa. Opening the self-seal pouch. See, already that is new to me. I've never had blue wax before. Interesting. Okay, so we have a white funnel tray. Quite large, not the biggest I've had, not the smallest, the medium size. <laughs> Mentioned the blue wax. Ooh, three slabs of blue wax in this one. Anybody used blue wax before? Notice the difference between blue and pink? Or is it just the colour? Do let me know, that would be great. Then we have, now this surprises me. Having needle nose tweezers in a round diamond kit. Because normally I thought tweezers only came in square kits. So that's nice to have. They are metal, they are very sharp, very, very sharp. And so it's nice that we've got this plastic guard to make sure that we don't prod ourselves unintentionally. Then we come to the basic diamond pen, which is like a white translucent with glitter inside and has a small multiplacer on the end. Now I would say probably three diamonds for this one. We also get a larger multi-place end, guessing mm, nine, perhaps. So much larger, I don't use these sizes. I find them a little bit cumbersome, but I might try and practice a bit more with a larger one, we'll see. And we get a squidgy for the end of our diamond pen for comfort while we're diamond painting. So, a good kit there. Also in the kit you get an instruction sheet both in French and in English. So if you've never diamond painted before 
this will give you some little tips. Now that's nice because it says you get the chart and you ensure the protected film is peeled back from the first area before working on it. And then there's a tip. Ensure the protective film is not removed from the entire design. Instead, gradually peel back the back of the protective film. So it does give you really good hints here if you're new to diamond painting. A special adhesive is pre-printed. Tip, ensure that you take care when recovering the adhesive with the protective film. And then it continues. I really like these tips. And then we also get instructions for care. So if something does go slightly wrong, if the fabric accidentally soils in the working process, it can be easily cleaned with a soft damp cloth and cold water. Ensure you wipe and not scrub. Once you've completed your design, lay the protective film over the top and you do this using a cylindrical container, such as a glass bottle or a rolling pin then gently roll it over to secure the diamonds on the sticky surface. Roll the fabric piece, design facing in, gently to store away. Design facing in. Hmm, I always do mine with the design facing out. <laughs> oh, okay. Ensure it does not come into contact with ink or paints. Not suitable for washing, ironing and dry cleaning. So a really good comprehensive instruction sheet, especially if you're a beginner, but also if you're more experienced because I've never ever stored my diamond paintings facing in. What do you do? Next we get a sticker sheet, again glossy with the picture depicted in the middle. I love all these Hawaiian details around, it makes it feel really nice and summery as well even though we're in autumn in the UK at the moment. So we've got the size there and we've got the sticker sheet this side with all of the colours and symbols and DMC numbers. They are pre-cut to make it easy kitting up and very, very clear. Just looking at that symbol, I think that's probably going to be the hardest to see. Oh, and that one as well, because what they've done on this one, they've printed black on quite a dark background. So I would say 902 and 3857 are going to be the most difficult to see. And remember me saying about the legend that this symbol here was pink? Well, that looks brown. Let's have a look at the legend. Eight one four was that symbol there. Eight one four looks like a brown. So is it a pink or is it a brown? Well, when we look at the diamonds, we'll check that out because this chart looks much more like what I expected the painting to look like, being more browns and greens rather than pinks and oranges. <laughs> so now I don't know what this painting is going to look like. <laughs> I think we need to check the diamonds out. Okay, here are the diamonds, lovely packaged, I love that. And hmm, it has got browns, and it has got oranges and pinks, so still none the wiser. <laughs> it's like a little mystery tour, this one. Now they are all in self-seal bags, which I really like. I think that is much easier. I wouldn't necessarily work out of the bags for this one. 50 colours all together. Oh, and as we can see, we have got one two, three, four, five ABs in this one as well. Oh, I forgot about the ABs. How can I forget about the ABs? Oh, right, let's have a closer look at these colours. Oh, I can see one sparkling away at me there.
Wow, wow. Oh, this is my favorite bit. Oh, it's like a subtle rainbow, this one. But it's quite good for autumn, this one. Look at all of those autumn colors, the subdued purples, the subdued oranges in this one. Oh, I'm already loving it. Let's see. A bright lime green to start. Now, do you think, let's have a look, number one. So the bright green is definitely bright green. That's good to know, isn't it? Number two. Now I've got quite a few really, really puffy packs of number two. And they are going to sit around there. I mean, really, they're dotted all over. I'm not going to put all of the colours on the canvas. Number three and number four are quite similar. Are these all number fours? Yes, they are. Four puffy packs of number four. <laughs> okay, let's go this way around. Number five is a beautiful, subdued, palish orange. So, number five. There can't be that many number fives. It is a smaller bag and I can't seem to find any on the canvas at the moment. <laughs> number six. Number seven. Now, number eight. 720 is the colour and again it's a beautiful subdued pale corally colour. Number eight. Oh, that's going to be in her wing. So that's going to pick out the details in the wing there. Then we come to some greens. Number 10 and number 11. We're looking for number 17 bag to see. This is number... 15 and 16, again, very, very close in colour, which I'm hoping means that the blending on this painting is really lovely. 17, here we are. Okay, so this is the 814, which shows sort of a brownie colour on the sticker and more pinky on <laughs> the legend, and it's actually a sort of dark cranberry colour. Okay, <laughs> well now we know what that colour will be. So that is all of the bright pinky details down here. And not going to be bright pink, they're going to be this cranberry colour. So that's on the edges of that bright pink. Again, we've got another close colour. So three close colours together. So I'm going to skip through quite quickly now to show you the colours here. Oh, nice pale ones. Now this might be the fairy herself. C and F. Yes, so they're going to be here. And what colour her dress is going to be? Arrows. So her dress has a lot of arrows in it, which is 44. Oh, look at that colour. <gasps> wow. I am going to open up one of these packs to have a closer look at the diamonds for you. I am just sort of a little bit intrigued at the moment about <laughs> what this is actually going to look like diamond painted. <laughs> so 44 is her dress. along with 31. So that's part of her dress as well. So again, darker than what it shows on the canvas. Oh, okay, here we go to the ABs. Oh, look at that. What a stunning color. And then we have a red an orange, two oranges and a yellow AB. That is stunning. And that is the puffiest pack of them all. <gasps> wow, right. 
going to put these diamonds back in. I'm going to have a look at the three tens and then I'm going to have a closer look at the ABs. Okay, so we've got a very puffy pack of three tens here. They look sparkly in the bag, but we want to have a closer look at these. Let's tip a few out into my tray. Let's give it a little shake. Okay, looking at the three tens, they look sparkly. They are lining up really nicely together. We don't have to worry about nobules on the edge as much as we do squares, so that's good. One thing I would say about rounds is that we want to make sure that they are a uniform size and these do look like they are. So having a close look. We can always expect some junk in our diamond painting. I am very, very fussy about my diamonds and I do remove anything that doesn't look perfect. But they look fabulous. I'm going to see if I can get you any closer. There we go. Really uniform size, aren't they? And they are sparkling. And there's no dust and they didn't feel staticky. So I am very, very pleased with these ones. Okay, shall we have a look? I can't resist it. We've got to have a look at these beautiful ABs. <gasps> backed onto a deep red. Oh, look at, oh, they are stunning. Oh my goodness. Oh, they are like little rainbows all of their own. Look how that colour changes as you move the diamonds. Oh, they really are like little jewels. Get you closer up. Again, very uniform in size. I can't see any scratches on these ones. Oh, maybe what's that there? That might that one might have a little bit of an issue there. So I would probably remove that one. Can you see it's sort of got a bit of a crack there? But again, that's me being extremely fussy. But I would probably discard that one. And the rest of them are little jewels. Oh, wow, little rainbow. <gasps> stunning, stunning, stunning. Let's pop those back in the bag. Oh, that is, I'm so pleased that these ones are the majority of the ABs. Nothing against the other ones. They are all, shall we have a look at an orange? Let's have a look at an orange one. And then I'll show you where on the canvas these ABs sit. Okay, I think these ABs are much, much subtler than the red. Still very, very delicately pretty with the pinks, yellows, golds, orange, See if I can get you any closer. Beautiful. Okay, where are they on the canvas? That's the next question. I have peeled back the protective layer and changed the angle to try and get a better view for you. As you can see, it is a beautiful canvas and I really, really hope all of that blending with those different colours will help it not be so pixelated. We're going to see that as I work on this canvas. Let me pull back the top half as well. What I can tell you is the protective film on this feels quite thick. 
really good quality. She's just delightful, isn't she? She really is delightful. Okay, I've got as much as the picture in as I can while we look for where these ABs are in the painting. There's again, just a little bit dropped off the end of the shot here, but not much. I would say a couple of inches, um, three inches or so, but I think you'll get a good idea of where the ABs sit on this picture. So starting with this stunning deep red purpley colour that is dotted around the canvas. If you can see the squares of red, this is this AB and the edge of her wing is the majority of where they are going to sit. So again, these sprinkling bits around and the edge of the wing. The bright red pink is symbol N and again it matches in with the edge of the wing. The first orange is an arrow up and that is mainly within this block here. Just little parts of this have that AB within it. The next orange, which is slightly darker, is on the forest floor around here, again sprinkled within. And lastly, we have the delicate yellow, which is sprinkled around some of the edges of her wings and also in the flower here. So ABs are going to be sprinkled throughout and then more heavier within the edge of her wing. So starting with the orange AB, that is symbol T, so as you can see, there are little sprinklings here and there for that AB. Again, they look more yellow on the canvas. So on this part of the canvas, we're looking for the empty triangles or arrows up, whichever you call them. I call those arrows up, but I guess they are empty triangles. So all of those empty triangles are this orange AB. The centre of this nodding flower and a little bit of the stem around the P symbol is this yellow AB. The tip of the fairy's wing is this bright red AB and then all of these symbols here are this deep red purple colour and the P here and along the edge is again that lovely yellow. Towards the bottom of the fairy wing, you can see the ABs taper off a little bit. So we still have some deep red purples here and we still have dotted P yellow ABs here. Looking at the tree detail, there are a few dotted up the tree trunk as well. This one has really intrigued me. I cannot imagine how this one is going to turn out, the exact colourways, what the blending is going to be like, how pixelated will it be? It is around as well. And I think this is the first time that I felt this way. It's really, really intrigued me. I love the design of it. There's so much detail in it. Of course, having the fairy slap bang in the middle, but all of the detail around her as well is going to be such a joy to work on this one with all of those details. If you are interested in purchasing a kit from Oraloa, please use the discount code STONEMAGPIE and you will get 15% off. I do earn a little bit of commission from Oraloa if you use that code and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. So here is the full kit on the table. Really, really lovely diamonds. Lovely explanation in the instructions. Nice pre-cut stickers. 
a sticker as well of the picture, a comprehensive toolkit and the beautiful canvas itself. I'll show you how much this one cost me. It was priced at 57 euros on the website. I used a discount code and with shipping and taxes, etc., I paid a total of 58.36 euros. I'm really happy with that price. I think it's worth it. I think the quality looks good. I'm interested to get going on this one to see how the diamonds fit on the canvas itself. And not forgetting our free little freebie. I still love that little mini tray, it's so cute. Thank you, Oraloa, that was a lovely surprise. And I have played my scratch card. As you can see, I didn't win because I didn't get three of the same symbols. So I didn't win a kit of my choice, but it's lovely to have the opportunity for that. And there we have it. Thank you so much for joining me. I really hope you've enjoyed seeing the kit and taking a trip around all of the different ABs with me. I hope you enjoy your own diamond painting and I do invite you to subscribe, like and share and I'll see you next time. Take care everyone. Bye.